Happy 6th anniversary, Epic 7 fam. After Worlds, Smilegate showed off some absolutely amazing news. There's going to be a ton of new units coming in the near future. Characters like Fenris, Harseti, Specialty Change Amiki, Schneel. All of this stuff is going to be coming very, very soon. We're also going to be getting hundreds of free summons, whether you're a new or enfranchised player, and a guaranteed Moonlight 5 star. There is also going to be a PC client, finally, which is one of the most requested features, I feel like, from the player base. I know it's probably up there. It's definitely in my top five things that I wanted for the game. So we're finally getting that. And of course, we're also getting a ton of freebies. So much so that uh, it's a lot to talk about in just one video. As you can see here, here's the stuff you get if you're a new player joining Epic 7 during the 6th anniversary. And as I just saw uh, over here a second ago, the existing and returning user uh, stuff that you will be getting for free from the anniversary. That is a lot of equipment if you take it in. Equipment being the biggest bottleneck for most people when it comes to clearing content in Epic 7. So when we finally get our hands on this free gear, I will do a guide and talk about what the best stuff is if you are a new or returning player to kind of help jumpstart you, get you into the game as fast as possible. But for right now, in this video, I want to talk about 5-star, non-limited, non-moonlight, non-collab heroes. It's basically, the characters that you get from these hero summoning tickets and hero selectors, as well as the hero selector, and then in uh, parentheses here, fully decked out. Right? I want to talk about these because this is what most people were DMing me about on Discord. Can I do a tier list talking about every standard 5-star that you could get in Epic 7 currently? talk about where they use, which ones are worth your time, your investment, and specifically, which ones are worth your fully decked out selectors. Fully decked out meaning that they come level 60, fully awakened, max skilled right off the bat, so that, that way you could jump into battle with them right away. So we're going to talk about all that here in this video. So here is our Azarin Foundation Day. That's basically Epic 7's anniversary the standard five-star tier list. And as you can see, I have all of the characters here that are red, green, or blue RGB, five stars that are currently in Epic 7. They're divided into a number of tiers. Let me break them down for you. Already receiving for free means that even if you're a new player, you're already gonna get these characters for free. So there's no reason to choose them. Only reason to choose them would be if you want duplicates to help strengthen your existing copies or their Moonlight five-star counterparts. Worth your fully decked out selector. These are the characters I think that are worth taking with the very coveted selectors that give a character at level 60 fully awoken with plus 15 skill levels. These I think are going to be your best options. Incredibly strong are characters that are played in a lot of content throughout Epic 7 or just in one content in particular. They are exceedingly strong. Usable are characters that are, you know, fine. They might require a bit of investment, a bit of dedication but they are pretty usable in a lot of content in Epic 7. Niche is the character is really strong in one specific avenue, and I will talk about that when we talk about each of the characters in this section. Comparable or better units means that they are usable, but there is usually a better option instead of them, and it's usually going to end up being like a limited collab or Moonlight 5-star hero, so you're only really taking characters from this tier if you just don't have the other character that I talk about when we come across these characters. Trash are characters, I think, that are never worth taking outside of just getting imprints for their Moonlight 5-star counterparts. 912 Balance Patch is essentially the two characters that will be changed and getting uh, a big boost, hopefully, with the, the September 12th Balance Adjustment. Uh, limited Heroes are the characters that you cannot take. And then Collab Heroes are also the other characters that Epic 7 has collaborated with in the past that you cannot take. So these last two tiers, they, you just can't take them. So in case you're wondering... Why is like Biblis not uh, available in the selector? It's because she's a limited hero. All right, let's jump into it. And I want to at least talk about the ones that you're already receiving for free. Because if you're a newer player, there are a couple of these that are a cut above the rest. I'm going to drag Bomb Model Khan and Yuna here to the end. These are the two that I think are not really worth your investment. Yuna in particular, I think is terrible. Bomb Model Kana has some use applications for like Expedition. But you can largely ignore her if you are just starting out. The big two, the ones that you're going to be getting from the 6th year anniversary event, are Tamarin and Brig. These are pretty much the two best PvE characters in the entire game. They're not particularly good for Hunt, which is what most guides will advise you to do. 
when you first start out in a game. You know, get your hunt teams level because that gets you good gear. Those that can be put on the back burner because the six year anniversary is going to give you so much gear that you shouldn't neglect hunt teams, but you can focus on basically whatever you want. And the whatever you want portion of the game being in like adventure, abyss, uh, expedition, some of the more challenging content. That's the stuff that Tamarin and Brig really shine in. Tamarin's pretty much the best PvE character in the game. Pretty much a mandatory support slash healer. She does everything. Cleanses, heals, attack buffs, bonus damage for your team. Speeds up your slowest characters on the team. Does everything you could really want on a supporter. And Brig is just the universally best knight, I feel like, for PvE content. He provides some protection to your team and also puts up big damage despite being very tanky. Uh, offers some very good... Uh, debuffs as well like defense break which is probably the best or very close to the best uh debuff in the entire game for pve so these two you get for free with the event they're amazing definitely invest in them after that you have sermia Sigret, and vivian which you'll get as you get further along into the game with the expert hunt event vivian in particular is incredibly strong in almost every uh, aspect of pve she's very good in a lot of hunts she's very good in abyss very good in adventure of these three characters, I think she's the one you definitely want to invest in the most. Most people will probably tell you it's Secret, but Secret's only really proficient in like Wyvern. Uh, and if that's your game, if you're trying to farm the very coveted speed set, I definitely recommend chasing it. But of these three, I think Vivian is the one you want to invest most of your time into. For all the characters, if you haven't noticed already on the screen, I will be putting up an example build so that way you have some idea of what to focus on if you decide to choose that character. Next up is the Worth Your Fully Decked Out Selector. In this event, you will get a number of selectors that give the character fully decked, which means that they come at level 60, fully skilled, fully awoken, basically just to add gear, and they are at the end game, ready to go, ready for you to use them for whatever you want. Basically, the characters in this tier, normally, if you're going to play them, require heavy Malagora, basically heavy skill investment, so why not choose them with the fully decked selector, because as opposed to another character in a different tier, that character might not need that many skill levels in order to function. Whereas these characters need to most likely be very close to plus 15 to get the maximum potential out of them for them to do their jobs. First up, we have Arya. Arya is arguably one of the hardest characters to build in all of Epic 7. And not exactly new player friendly when it comes to PvP. She requires a absolute ton of stats to use in things like World Arena or Guild Wars. That said... Players over the last several years have figured out ways to make her work in PvE, specifically in things like Wyvern. So this character is very good, not only for newer players, but also late game players once you get really strong gear. So she's good early when you have nothing, and can also be a carry for you in PvP super late. Her design is obviously very attractive. A lot of people are uh, big fans of her big personality, so... If this is a character that you are looking at and thinking about taking, the fact that she gets a bunch of free crit chance and a bunch of damage and cooldown reduction makes her absolutely worth using your fully deck selector on. Next up is Celine, a personal favorite of mine. Uh, the clumsy ant here is very, very good at punishing non-attack skills in PvP. She is basically a PvP specialist, one of the best characters in the current format in PvP that we just came out of, and I expect her to be pretty strong for the next several months unless they find a way to just introduce a massive hard counter to her. Basically, Selene is an incredibly good single target DPS for PvP, and considering all of that damage comes from the skill levels, again, that makes her an excellent option for you with the fully decked selector. Next up is Shu. Shu is basically just a well-rounded bruiser for the most part. She's one of like the trinity of bruisers being Alencia, Shu, and Red Ravi. I would argue that she's probably like the second best or maybe the worst of those three, but she has the widest range of applications. She can be used in a lot of PvE content and is also still a pretty solid character in PvP. At the highest tiers of PvP, she's not going to really set the world on fire, but sometimes she gets used pretty decent if you're a newer player looking for somebody that to use in Guild Wars, for example. And obviously, her big draw for late game players is that she's one of the absolute best characters to use in Labyrinth. So, yeah, I can't recommend Shu enough when it comes to just looking for a standard bruiser. Not the best, but not exactly the worst. She's just rock solid and somebody I think everyone should have in their roster. Next up is Janua. Janua is probably the best single target DPS in the entire game. He's not as specialized as Selene. You could kind of just pick him in all forms of content. 
and he just does really, really huge damage. So if that's what you're looking for, you're looking for a Husbando that does big single target damage that can kind of carry you through like adventure and has some really, really strong PvP applications, I would consider taking Genua. Next up is Paldus. Paldus is like a different version of Selene, whereas Selene is, if you use a non-attack skill in PvP, I punish you really hard with one single target attack. Paldus is more like, hey, if you use a non-attack skill, I punish you with like an all right damaging AoE attack that just happens to sometimes get rid of some of your buffs. So she's kind of this like all-rounder character. Doesn't do big damage, does some debuffs, but not like the most amount of debuffs. She's considered a staple in PvP because she's one of the few characters that answers some of the better characters in the format, like her Moonlight 5 counterpart, C Phantom Politis. So I would consider taking Politis, not necessarily before Selene, but Politis, if you're somebody that is really looking forward to playing PvP at all levels of play. Next up is Red Robbie. Robbie is essentially a bruiser, the red version of Shu here. She is quite a bit better, and that's because uh, she just got a recent rework slash buff. So she's very strong in the current meta. She's kind of geared towards fighting some of the best characters in the entire game, like Navy Captain Landy now. Uh, pretty much just a very slow juggernaut style character. Uh, can be played on counter or just like any kind of damaging stats you have. Do big damage to characters. Guarantees gets a critical hit, which makes her again good against some of the most difficult characters for newer players to answer in the format. Is much more PvP centric than Shu. If you're looking for an all-rounder bruiser, I think Shu is a better option for you. But if you are a PvP specialist and you like playing that slow, tanky playstyle, Ravi is going to be the character, I think, for you to pick up in this tier, right next to Arya. On the total flip end of that, we have Ran. Ran is one of the strongest characters in Epic 7. He has been for about two years or so now. He is the fastest character in the game. He puts up big damage. He has a full uh, buff strip on his S3. And the very coveted AoE defense break, which is incredibly strong in this game. He's super good for hard content and bossing because of that defense break and that high speed. And he is the cornerstone of most of the game's aggressive strategies in PvP. If you like to go fast and win fast and play very aggressively, Ran is an excellent option for you. Again, has good PvE and amazing PvP applications. Next up, we have the incredibly strong tier. These are some of the best characters in Epic 7, but usually their skill levels aren't really as important, right? You don't need them as a, a high level as some of the ones that are fully decked out, which is why I put them here. But make no mistake, these are still some of the best ones for you to take with your selectors in the game. Let's start with Destina. Destina is basically just the benchmark that we compare all other Soul Weavers, all other healers to in the game. Great main healer, has a AoE full cleanse, built-in effect resistance that makes her hard to get debuff she has a full team revive as well just does almost everything you could want out of your healer and in the spots where tamarind isn't super good destina is usually going to end up being the next best option so i think she's a character that everyone should have access to especially if you're the fan of that standard jrpg party of like tank healer support plus dps next up is elena elena is a very good character in a lot of content uh, in Epic 7, she has some PvE applications for like harder content because she reduces AoE damage. She is a pretty solid cleanser. And if you give her the 5-star artifact Celestine, which you could take off of your artifact selector, she could also be a main healer for you. She's also very good for slower playstyles in PvP because she drastically reduces the effectiveness of AoE damage that is coming in. And she is also a cleanser that has invincibility. So she could kind of be built in such a way to disrupt a lot of aggressive strategies, specifically ones that revolve around Ran, who we already talked about as one of the best characters in the game. Next up is Isaria. Isaria is another like staple PvE unit. She's basically Tamarind's best friend. They are prom uh, prominently featured together in uh, the Tam Isaria team. That is very good, if not the best team, for a lot of the PvE content in the game. Basically, you should have Isaria. I think no matter what, if you're trying to clear all the hard PvE content in the game, because she just does almost everything you could want in a support character. She has full strip, she has decent damage, she can hold some of the best artifacts in the game in order to ramp your team's damage. She has two defense breaks, making her crazy consistent in helping your team do big damage. And she is one of the only characters that can reset cooldowns of characters on your team. Again, making her insane with Tamarin, allows Tamarin to get the ball rolling and become almost an unstoppable team right off the rip in any form of PvE content. Probably the character 
you took with your selector at the start of the game. Basically, the character everyone tells you to reroll for. But if you didn't pick her up and you're still new, Asaria is, I think, a mandatory pickup and you should not sleep on her. Definitely get her. Next up is Lua and Nequal. I'm going to talk about both of these characters together because they're essentially top tier PvP disruptors. Lua used to be the more favorite of the two, but with the advent of Laia, the new limited hero from a couple of months back, uh, the one that is going to have a rerun, by the way, for this uh, event, the sixth anniversary, which if you are watching this, make sure you get Laia. She's super important. She's one of the most important characters in the game. Use all of your Covenant bookmarks to pick up one of her as early as possible. And the reason why Laia is so important is because both of these characters, Lua and Nikwal, Laia counters them, and there's not really too much else that does in PvP. These are like the ladies that disrupt everybody. They're very fast and uh, have the coveted cooldown pushback on their ultimates, but there's a couple of key differences. So Lua has the ability to sleep and defense break characters, which could be more valuable if you're trying to play a controlling game or get more burst damage. Whereas Nikwal has the bind debuff, which stops your opponent from using counter attacks and certain passive skills. And also Seal, which completely disables one character's passive skills. She is one of three characters in the game with Seal. Of the two, Nikwal, I think, is quite a bit better right now. But that's not to say that Lua couldn't come back and still be one of the best characters in PvP in the coming months. Next up is Pera. Pera is a fantastic character, I feel like, for anybody playing the game. Even if you're somebody who is a PvE enthusiast. I started a new challenge account about a year and something ago and I used Pera as basically my main carry because she does almost everything you could want in one character. She is insanely fast. She gives attack buff to your entire team. She provides a barrier to herself as well as escort which basically turns her into a tank. She is the second fastest character in the game. She has dedicated stuns. She can strip buffs from the enemy team. Has AoE damage and pretty good damage multipliers like overall. She can't necessarily be your main DPS but she could be an off DPS, a tank, or a support. And she's also incredibly powerful in the current state of all forms of PvP. So I think if Para is a character that looks appealing to you, she's a little bit difficult to build in the fact that you need a lot of speed gear. But other than that, she's really, really good, I think, at all levels of play and somebody I think that you should probably have in your box. Speaking of characters that you should have in your box, to round out the section is Rowana. Rowana is just this really hot looking girl that you just have sit there and her passive procs and you win the game let me explain so this character is like s1 and s3 are just very whatever but she has the best passive in the entire game in vigilant eye essentially if a enemy uses a counter attacking move an extra follow-up attack or a dual attack where they pull in another ally to attack for you it procs her passive which heals your entire team and speeds them up in combat there are a lot of teams that you will fight in PvP and a lot of bosses you will fight in Epic 7 where if Vigilant Eye is able to be used, it completely invalidates the fight and you win automatically. Like, it's that broken of a passive. There are so many boss fights, so many characters in PvP where if Rowana works, you just win, no questions asked. So for that reason, she's just a staple unit, I feel like, for everybody and she's probably the easiest character to build in Epic 7. You literally just slam HP on her and some defense, and that's it. She needs no other stats. Going a little bit faster now, we move on to the usable tier. These are characters that might be widely used in a certain game mode or just have multi-uses, but they're not quite as good as the ones in the tier above them. First up, we have Araminta. Really good sneaky control pick at the end of a lot of World Arena drafts and has some applications in other forms of PvP. Basically, you build a really fast... She stuns and burns the entire enemy team, and if your opponent just doesn't have any cleansers or any fast characters to contest her, she runs them over. Next up is Bihu, who's kind of like a Swiss army knife kind of character. He's reasonably bulky, reasonably fast, has reasonably good damage, and also the coveted unbuffable debuff, which allows him to kind of hard counter some certain meta characters. He's also very good as a off DPS or main DPS in scenarios in PvP where your opponent isn't really able to be hit by critical hits with a character like, say, like Navy Captain Landy, for example. He's very, very good there. Uh, even characters like Lionheart Sermia that have very low base health, he has the ability to just delete them with his burns in one hit. He synergizes also, by the way, pretty good with uh, Araminta on like a burn team. Next up is Bologna. 
I'm kind of down on this character. I know other content creators are very big on this character. Bologna is very good for newer players, but she falls off incredibly hard if you are a uh, kind of returning player, existing player, or somebody who is approaching the late game. So she has built-in HP percentage damage, which helps make up for poor gear early on in the game, which makes her great for certain haunts like Banshee or Azimanic. And she's got some pretty good Labyrinth applications as well. She's also very strong in Rift Season 2, which is available as this video airs, but might not be in a couple of weeks to a couple of months. So she's good right now in those spots. But the thing is, she's never the best option in any of those spots, which is why I have her in usable. She's great, again, if you're new, but once you get some of the better options, especially some of the collab heroes or the limited heroes, she kind of falls out of favor. So that's why I'm not super big on her. Even in Rift Season 2 where she's an all-star, by the time you get to max Rift controller level, she's no longer really used, making the investment you put into her feel not very good. Like, it's a, a, a character that if you could somehow skimp by without using her, you will save more resources in the long run, which is why it's hard for me to recommend her as somebody in like worth your fully decked out or incredibly strong. Basically, this is a good DPS for you to pick when you're still new to the game, but she does fall off eventually. Next up is Command Model Laika. This is another like Swiss Army Knife style character. Provides a lot of utility in the form of like AoE immunity for your team, AoE sleep to control the enemy team, the target debuff, which makes her really good in not only PvP, but certain PvE content. She just does quite a lot. She's great in like Katie's hunts, certain challenge modes, Abyss, for example. You could have some success with her. And she could also be your opener in a lot of forms of PvP. She's not by any means like a top tier character. She is just like a super balanced, versatile character. And if that's what you're looking for, somebody likes to play uh, speedy with a versatile character, then I think Command Model Laika could be good for you. Next up is Etta or Ida, depending on your pronunciation. She's basically a blue AoE DPS. Uh, basically, you set her up in certain kind of combination teams. She uses the Artifact Ancient Book most of the time, so that way she can use her Soulburn combo to essentially hit the enemy team twice with two AoEs, which enables certain ML5s like Commander Pobble, for example. She's got an AoE stun and a defense break. Not the best as far as main damage goes, but she puts up respectable damage, has some respectable utility, and if you're somebody who likes to play these like aggro combo teams, then she's definitely worth considering. And I don't really think she's that bad either in certain PvE content. Not the best, but not exactly a bad option. I know I've used her personally for Nightmare Labyrinth in the past. Next up, we have Flan. Flan is a kind of like dedicated character specialist like she's not as dedicated as the next character we're talking about from here but she is more for the aggressive player in pvp she sets up uh, a lot of these aggressive strategies very similar to ram but it's a bit more specialized requires a bit more effort a, a bit more love and attention dedicated to her gear to bring out her full potential additionally she does have some use cases in pve content specifically She's a good option for you early on for hunts, uh, specifically Wyvern. And she's also good in a lot of Advent content, but that is super late game oriented content. So that might be something that's a bit inaccessible to you if you are new. But basically, if you think Flan's design is cute and you're somebody who likes to play aggressive and Ran doesn't do it for you, or you just want to have like a second similar copy of a character like Ran, then Flan can be that character for you. Next up is Fumir. Fumir's probably the most challenging character to use on this list she is primarily used only in pvp for her passive ability which is basically if a red and green character take a turn before her then she will full strip the enemy team sleep them and defense break them which sets up a massive combo allows you to instantly kill the opponent's opposing team she's basically like a wombo combo style character but in order to really take advantage of her your entire account has to have a lot of red and a lot of green characters for very specific situations Essentially, if you are somebody who wants to play Fumir, you have to be a Fumir specialist. She's not just somebody that you could just pick up and have success with. You have to basically build your whole account around her. So if that is something that's a challenge that appeals to you, then I definitely recommend picking up Fumir for your PvP needs. Next up is Hua Yong. Hua Yong probably could be considered comparable or better options by a lot of people because, well, she's commonly compared to like Midnight Galileus, but that is a limited. Hua Young's role is basically in PvP to delete one character 
with her skill 3, which is a Flaming Monarch Strike, I believe. That's kind of her thing. She's like a single target tank buster. She blows up one character, and if she survives another 3 to 4 turns, then she gets to do it again. I think she's a underappreciated character in a lot of forms of PvP. I do think that she is pretty strong. Just nowhere near as strong as she was at launch, she, in case you don't know. Was one of the most broken characters in all of Epic 7. And one of the only characters that they ever actually nerfed. They usually don't nerf characters in this game. That said, despite the fact that she's nerfed, I do think that the character is still worth your time and usable in PvP. Next up is the Immortal Wukong. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if this character is actually available on the selector. I've had conflicted reports that he is or is not. I have chosen to put him in here as if he was. Immortal Wukong is currently the best way to farm gear in Epic 7 with Rift Season 2, but that will eventually go away and he will lose that role, which is why you see characters like Kane in the trash tier because that's what he was for Rift Season 1. That said, thankfully, Immortal Wukong is actually a respectable character in a lot of forms of PvP, and that's due to the fact that he's one of the few like non-limited, non-ML AoE DPSs that does pretty respectable damage. His passive gives him some survivability. And his skill 3 is a massive single target nuke with a stun. So overall, I feel pretty confident in saying that Wukong is at least usable in a lot of content, even after his use case in Rift kind of goes away. Next up is Kisei. Kisei is another one of these like blue ladies that requires you to be a specialist like Flan or Vermeer. Kisei is like the de facto glass cannon DPS. She requires a lot of attack, a lot of crit damage, and a lot of speed to do really, really well. But it's a very high investment unit. You need to have really good quality gear to make the most out of Kisei. She requires like a dedicated draft also kind of to set her up and use her super well in uh, PvP. Most people pair her with the limited character Ahmed because it allows you to use her Nocturne ultimate skill into her AoE attack Dark Scar for massive damage. It can wipe an entire team. Uh, she's one of the most gorgeous looking characters in the game. She's one of the oldest characters in the game, and she still looks like a brand new character that came out today. So if this is a character that appeals to you, I do think she is a pretty solid PvP DPS. Her PvE limitations or applications, I'd say, are very, very limited, though. So I don't think I would take her if you're just looking for a PvE DPS. Next up is Lilius. Lilius might be, like, the most balanced character in the entire game. She's not exceptional at anything, but she does a lot of things, right? Like, she has some control aspects. She's, like, an off DPS. You can build her as a main DPS. She's a cleanser, but she's also a got good enough stats and is in a class that could be a main tank or, like, an off tank. Basically, you could do almost anything with Lilius. The one thing that really sets her apart, I think, from uh, other characters, is she's one of the few characters in the game that can counter Lua. If she's on Mort's Artifact, which is uh, Ancient Dragon's Legacy, she can counter Lua. But otherwise, she is just, like, a Swiss Army knife, that has a lot of applications in PvE and also PvP. So if you're looking for like a character that has high value for your entire uh, account's lifespan, Lilius is definitely like higher up on that list. Again, she's only here and usable because she's not like incredibly strong. She just does literally like everything uh, at like an average to slightly above average level. Next up, we have Senya. Senya is a really strong character in things like Guild Wars and Arena, but kind of has fallen off in World Arena due to characters like Abyssal Euphine. She's a very difficult to use character and requires a lot of copies of her five-star artifact, which is Spear of a New Dawn. But in the situations that Senya is actually usable, she is very, very powerful. She basically provokes the entire enemy team and blinds them, and they're forced to go into her when she has 100% counter rate. She's got like built-in lifesteal, does pretty big damage. Certain characters just, you know, die to her passive, which has like a like a minor amount of reflect damage built into it. She is a hard to use, hard to set up character, but when you actually get her set up, she's very, very strong. So that's why I have her here under usable. You could argue she might be closer to niche. She's definitely one of the weaker characters in this category, but I do think that you can still find some success with her if you are kind of like a newer to mid game player and you can actually get her artifact and get her built properly next up is vildred uh, i debated with putting vildred in worth your fully decked out selector for this because i had heard a rumor that you would be able to get characters at max imprint out of the fully decked out selector and if that is true then 1000 percent uh vildred belongs in the fully decked out selector but vildred just overall is a rock solid character especially for a newer player 
He has a huge amount of AoE damage that makes him incredible for adventure and catching up really quickly in the story. And also, he has pretty good hunt applications. He's pretty much, in my opinion, one of the best characters that you can play for, like, as a manic hunt. He's incredible in that hunt. Really, really strong and very gear-friendly, very new player-friendly. It'll allow you to farm things like immunity really early on in the game. He also has probably the best overall imprint in the game, which is why, again, I said I would have put him in fully decked out if that is true that he comes at Triple S because he's the only character in the game that gives the AoE speed imprint. And that is paramount to playing aggressive strategies at the absolute highest level of Epic 7. So Vildred is a character that could carry you really early on in the game. He basically makes transitioning to the mid game like a breeze if you have him. And late game, he's still incredibly relevant, especially if you want to main a character like Ran or like Pera, right? If like those are the kinds of characters you want to main, then Vildred with extra imprints is really, really strong, right? So that's why I have him here. Uh, and I think he is, again, one of the better characters in this usable tier. Finally, to round out this tier, we have Zahak. Zahak is basically going to be your best, like, easily accessible budget answer to dodge-based heroes in PvP. And you will see those often because Savior Auden is a very powerful character. And she is free for all players once they clear Episode 4 of the story. So as you first kind of dip your toes into PvP... Zahak is going to pretty much be one of the better characters for you in dealing with that character until you get a more fleshed out roster. Very rarely does he see play at high level of World Arena because people have better options. But when you're like in the mid game, again, he's really, really good there. That's not to say, by the way, he falls off completely because he's still one of the best characters in the entire game for Julieve Council in the Labyrinth, like Nightmare Labyrinth specifically. So he still has usability even there, right? So Zahak is going to be somebody who's going to, again, just like Vildred, pretty strong uh, early on and still has applications late. Not as good as Vildred, but again, you could think of him very similarly. Moving on to niche, we have Arunka, only used in Guild War offense to defeat teams that have a lot of barriers. Chloe is only really used to farm at Banshee 13 at a hyper fast speed with a one shot composition, which isn't really as in demand as it used to be thanks to the advent of Rift. Elvira is a character that is only good versus fighting spirit characters in PvP. Specifically, just really Abyssal Euphine and, uh, was it, Lone Crescent Bologna. Other than that, she doesn't really have any use cases anywhere else in all of Epic 7. Kron is an anchor that you play to kind of weather the storm and defeat cleave or aggressive compositions in PvP. Ken is one of the best Ancient Inheritance characters in the game, which is sadly ending as this video goes live, so... Uh, if you choose Ken, he's not going to really be super relevant for a couple of months. Yes, I know Tristan has used him and made uh, him work in like specific hunts, but I'll be real with you. I think that that is a little bit too difficult to do for newer players. Uh, the gear threshold, I just think, is not there for the people that want to play Ken in those kind of scenarios. So for me, he just ranks as a really good Ancient Inheritance character, and that's about it. Next up is Lydica. Lydica is a character that is very strong in Abyss. And sometimes Nightmare Labyrinth, and that's kind of it. She's never, like, the first choice for Nightmare Labyrinth. But for Abyss, there are a lot of floors, specifically, like, 115 in particular, where she is pretty much your best option, and that's why she lands here and not in some of the lower tiers. Uh, Lulica is a character that I think probably should be in comparable or better options because she is a jack-of-all-trades, master of none. But I do think she is pretty solid. She's, like, the second or third best option in a lot of scenarios in PvP. Or, it's just say like PvE, my bad. But yeah, so like Abyss, I found her to be incredible there, which is why I put her in here because she's very similar performance to Lydica and Tenebria, who we'll be talking about soon. But she also could be used in things like Hall of Trials. Uh, you could use her in Expos, right? She's decent in Adventure. Okay in Hunt, right? She's just okay in a lot of things. It's kind of weird because Lulica feels like a character who should be incredible based on her kit, but really doesn't get there again because epic 7 is a game where you want to have the right tool for the right job and she's just a character that is like pretty good in a lot of scenarios but not amazing in every scenario right that's kind of it's kind of weird again you could technically put her down here but uh, i've chosen to leave her in niche because i think she's a little bit better than everyone else in the tier below her next up is pavel right there with chloe as a banshee 13 one shot i think if you wanted to play him in pvp he can function 
but most people watching this video do not have the gear to make him function as a pvp character so we're just gonna say hey dude's just really good at banshee 13. Tenebria is just like Lydica, an absolute all-star in Abyss, one of the best Abyss characters in the entire game. I will keep championing this character for Abyss. All my Abyss guides basically kind of use Tenebria, so if you're looking to clear hard PvE content, she's really good at that. She's also very good at the Expedition Blooming Snaglish, but that is like the lowest value Expedition, and not a lot of people actually run it, so uh, taking a character for that kind of content specifically doesn't feel super great. Next up is Tywin. I'm actually going to do you the favor now and just move Tywin down here because Tywin is a knight that is supposed to kind of stop debuffs from hitting the person in the back line. And he was like, okay at that, but not super great. But now we have Dragon Bride Senya who does it way better, right? And then with the uh, 912 balance adjustment patch, Abigail will basically be doing the same role. And I think she's going to do it quite a bit better. So that's why I've decided to just move him down. I'll save you the time now. Not really worth the option. If you wanted to take him, I would go with something else. Uh, Violet is a character that has some PvE applications because he could just kind of tank certain things like Automaton Tower for free. Pretty decent in like adventure. Uh, some Abyss floors, I think you can make take advantage of at least the lower ones. He's like all right there. And then in PvP specifically, he is very good versus like teams that only have blue DPS. Now, that makes him probably sound like he's usable, but there's a lot of counters to him. A lot of things that kind of, you know, don't work out in his favor. And he is inherently a very high RNG unit. So that's kind of why I put him in niche. Like, he does things and he's very powerful at those things, but they are luck-based and they kind of have to have everything line up. Like, he's a perfect Storm character. If everything lines up, he's amazing. Otherwise, he's kind of not it. Next up is Yulha. Uh, tanks are really not, like, amazing in the current meta outside of, like, say, like, Ambitious Tywin, Albedo, and uh, Crimson Armin. The rest of the, the tanks in the game kind of feel like they've fallen on hard times. Like, Arwell is kind of, like, the low end of what's playable right now in tanks. Yulha used to be really good, like, I want to say, like, nine months to a year ago. Now she's not particularly very great. You basically will see her in, like, Guild War offense to bait something, and that's kind of it. Almost every other tank that you could play, especially like the free-to-play or accessible ones like Arwell or Crimson Armor are just significantly better in most of the scenarios, which is why she lands here in niche. Uh, and then the rest of the characters you can see here are in comparable or better options or trash. I'm not going to bother with the trash ones. I'm just going to tell you the better option you could choose uh, for the character in comparable or better options in case you're curious. Fallen Cezanne is Tenebria. Cecilia is Brig. Charlotte would be like uh, uh, Lone Crescent, Bologna, or even like Bihu will do the same job where you get around uh, critical resistance characters better. Anytime you could build Elagos, Ran, or Para is a better option. Anytime you could build Kawera, Kisei, or some of these other blazing fast DPS in the game are a better option. Yulha or any tank is better than Krau. Ludwig, almost any AoE cleaver, including his ML5 counterpart, is just way better. Melissa is a similar story to Kawarik. Anytime you can highly invest in Melissa and make her do really well, you'd be better off putting that same speed DPS gear on any other fast DPS in the game. Mort is just a tragically underpowered bruiser. He's super cool, has super amazing things in his kit. His damage is just laughable though, so until they buff that, he's just going to remain here. Mui is a debuffer that is just nowhere near as good as any of the other debuffers in the format. Ray is a healer slash cleanser that does like nothing better than Destina. Uh, Sharoon is a injury based uh, kind of like debuffer in a format where we have Urban Shadow Shoe and Death Dealer Ray. Death Dealer Ray being a free character you can take from the selector. Both of those characters just completely invalidate this one's existence, do her job way better than she could ever hope. Uh, Teyu is a character that's designed to punish non attack skills, but he's so laughably bad compared to Selene and Politus. We've already talked about Tywin. And then Euphine is completely invalidated by the collab character Jacko Valentine. So if Guilty Gear ever comes back around, then yeah, she's just a better option of this. Euphine really only works in tandem with the ML5 star Zeo. And only if you have really good gear and you're really confident you can pull it off. Last two characters to talk about are Alencia and Abigail. I expect Abigail to land in the usable tier after her set of changes. She is a much better version of Tywin. She is a health scaling bruiser that gives combat readiness, has curse, full strip for one character in the team, and injury. Overall, pretty good character. I used to use her a lot in like regular arena. I think she's incredible in regular arena. And I expect 
with this most recent round of changes, she should at least kind of be like a fourth or fifth pick in World Arena if it's a character that you are, uh, you know, the design kind of like speaks to you. Uh, doesn't for me. I know a lot of people love Abigail, but to me, I think she's kind of, eh. but yeah, again, pretty solid character. And then the last character I want to talk about is Alencia. I'm going to tentatively put Alencia in worth her fully decked out selector because she needs the Mulligoras to do the damage and her changes that she's going to be getting makes her an incredibly powerful bruiser versus other bruiser slash tank teams in PVP. Like guaranteed defense break into potentially 40 to 50% injury is super powerful. Full strip with defense buff and a CR pushback is super powerful. Her damage is already really good. So everything about Alencia, the good things about her, is supercharged with this buff. The problem is that her drawbacks, the things that she's weak to, those are still there, and those are pretty much the meta things. So if we ever get answers to the current meta, which I expect they will do with new unit releases like Harseti, uh, like Schneel and stuff, if they ever counter those kinds of characters, right, Alencia becomes prime uh, to basically be one of the better bruisers in the format if bruiser meta comes back with her set of changes i think that she is going to be one of the strongest bruisers in the entire game arguably on par or better than red robbie which is why i'll put her here and there you go that is it i know it's long but that is every character that you could take with your rgb5 selector hopefully this is what you were looking for because i know a number of you were dming me hoping to see a video like this stay tuned in the next like day or two i will also be doing a five star artifact tier list very similar to this one. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.